Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries, distinguished speakers, honorable participants, and loving audience, all the beautiful people present here from all around the globe. I, Ms. Nada Radkovic, IAU board member, country director of IAU Croatia, the president of Research Center IAU, welcome you all to the second International Sustainable Development Goal Conference, ICDGC 2022, for the ICDGC 2022 leaders. Development that meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Yes, after the last year, after the first grand success of the first International Sustainable Development Goal Conference, we are here today on 19 September together again, more stronger with more solutions on the topic, living sustainability transform the world. Social environment, economic equality, 17 SDGs, 12 days, 50 countries, 100 and plus global SDG experts, people, prosperity, planet, peace, partnership. Welcome all to the first day on this topic. We have today uh, many solutions. Why sustainable development goals? I will not talk a lot about this because we have here amazing speakers, amazing experts, amazing students, a big change makers. So that is the most important challenge we are facing today. We need to take care of each one of this. International Internship University is recognizing always the global call for all 17 SDGs and we are working constantly on that. So it's my honor and I'm pleased to present our great organizer. International Internship University, IAU, is a leading virtual, is a leading virtual education system and global brand configuration, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative things. I need to, okay, just one moment. So we said that it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to provide better and virtual education to the all young learners of the globe. IAU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across the globe with the help of its 1,000 plus global educators. In a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed, inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. IIU has formed its four councils, namely Women Entrepreneurs Council, International Student Development Council, International Youth Development Council, International Council of Educators. So the main objective behind the council is to provide a support in every respect to the students, youth, women, entrepreneurs, and educators. IIU is coming every day with new events, education, projects, and you are all invited to be part of it. Be the change with IAU. Me, Professor Nada Radkoc, as a president of IAU Research Center, thinks if you have ever thought about how would be the world without education, science, innovation, technology, research, and any development of anything, then the IAU is the right place for the you. So today, it's my honor to present uh, today, I'm a 
moderator today i'm leading today i'm here but i want first to say why are we here what about the sdg one today we are talking about the no poverty no poverty what it means how many targets why this topic why is this important how can we be happy if we see all of this around of us Nobody can be happy. So if you want to be happy, you need to act. You need to act each one second in your life. If you didn't do something today, good. You need to do it. Because uh, I, I'm proud today. You will see here, I have great, great experts. And here also with this, guest speakers i have students i go in my classroom every day with a big smile because i know i'm educating leaders i'm educating great students so that is the thing what i'm doing every day in the morning in the high school in the afternoon on the university so i'm doing that i'm doing Act, I'm acting each one second in my life, in my day. So it's my honor to call and to present our great first speaker. So we are here to hear them. Uh, my first speaker is a student. You know, you students, IAU has a mission, has a vision. Each one student, each one person on this globe needs to have education. And what kind of education? Education for all. It means whole education. So that's, we will hear today the students, what they are doing. The first student is coming from my country. He's coming from my town scene. He's coming from my school. He is my student. He is my student for four years. And he's coming. He had, he's in the 12th grade now. And he is going to a profession called economic. So it's my honor to call him first today on the first day of ISDG 2022. Welcome there, Petar Vergoc. The IAU stage is yours. Hi, my name is Peter. I'm going to high school and this is my professor Nada. And today I prepared a presentation and I hope you will enjoy. Of course we will enjoy. <clears throat> uh, do you see presentation? Uh, yes, uh, 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 can you click enable? Great, great, it is great. Uh, so I'll begin. Uh, and this is the second international SDG conference. Uh, and uh, we all try to do it a great opening. Uh, so let's start. Uh, there are pictures that uh, presenting my school uh, and projects we are uh, in. And this is the map where our, uh, uh, where our country and the town is. Uh, so I'll talk about uh, the SDGs, uh, the, sustain the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, also known as the Global Goals. Uh, they were adopted by the United Nations in uh, 2015 as a universal call uh, to action to end poverty. Uh, protect the planet and assure that by uh, 2030 all uh, people enjoy peace and prosperity. Uh, here you can see pictures of, of all uh, 17 uh, SDGs. Uh, but today I will talk about uh, no poverty. Uh, no poverty, uh, sustainable development goal. Uh, Sustainable Development Goal, one of, of the 70 Sustainable uh, Development Goals established by the United Nations in 2015, uh, calls for the end of poverty in all form. Uh, the official wording is no poverty. Uh, no poverty means that everybody has enough money for their basic needs. 
uh, end poverty. Uh, you can here you can see a picture that says end poverty uh, in all its forms everywhere. Uh, so question is how many people live in poverty in the world? Uh, about 9.2% of the world, or 689 million people, uh, live in extreme poverty on less than uh, $119 a day, according to the World Bank. Uh, in the United States, 10.5% uh, of the population, 34 million people, live in poverty. Uh, in the last uh, year, uh, in the last uh, 30 years, the propor uh, proportion of the world population living in uh, extreme poverty has 55% uh, increased, 33% uh, remained more or less the same, and 20% uh, decreased. Uh, according to the World Bank, the countries with the highest poverty rates in the world are uh, South Sudan, 82.30%, Equatorial Guinea, 76.18%, Madagascar, 70.70%, Guinea Bissau, 69.30%, Eritrea, 69%, Sao Tome and Principe, 66.70%, uh, Burundi, 69.90%, and uh, for the last Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, 63.90%. Uh, here we can see the picture uh, presenting the World Bank. And uh, we need to stop poverty, but how? Uh, we need to educate children, provide clean water, ensure basic health care, empower a girl or a woman, imp improve ch childhood uh, nutrition, uh, support environmental programs, reach children in conflict, prevent child marriage. Uh, and uh, why is it so important to have no poverty? Uh, the rise in poverty is not only unfair and a uh, threat to the integrity of millions of people, but it also heightens uh, inequality, which in turn uh, weakens social co cohesion and severely hampers economic growth. So it's not only thing uh, that uh, un that is unfair to that people that uh, is not helping us too. Uh, and here are four things we can do uh, to help uh, stop poverty. Uh, we need uh, we can find a go one charity we want uh, that we want to support. Any donation, big or small, can make a difference. Uh, support campaigns uh, collecting items for victims of emergencies. Donate your clothes, food, supplies, etc., to support those in need. Uh, donate what you don't use. Local charities will give you uh, gently use, give you gently used clothes, books, and furniture a new life. Uh, poverty uh, persists in every country. Over eight percent of the world population lives in extreme poverty. Uh, lend your voice to the fight against extreme poverty. Uh, poverty is a social evil, uh, we can also contribute uh, to control it. For example, we can simply donate all uh, clothes to poor people, we can also sponsor the education of a poor child, or we can uh, utilize our free time by teaching poor students. And remember, before wasting food, somebody is still sleeping hungry. Uh, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate that you took uh, the time to be here and listen to my presentation. <laughs> That's it. Big, 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 big clap, Petar, for you. Uh, I'm really proud of you uh, because uh, today uh, you present uh, this topic, but uh, uh, we you are working a lot uh, like your colleagues uh, and uh, many actions and many good things uh, for the good uh, after we will have uh, after you we will have other students they will show some actions so uh, i can say again that i'm really proud on each one of my students thank you thank you enjoy the rest of the presentation yes we will we will thank you 
Now, uh, after uh, a student, we will have a speaker. We will have an amazing speaker and a well-known person here in India. He is well-known Sir Raja Rao Pajidipali. I will not present him because all of you know him. All of you know him, what he's working each day, as I said at the beginning of this conference, need to do in each one second a good thing. And yes, our great Saraja is doing that for humanitarian. He's a big social activist and it, he is really doing a great on the global level and for, for his country, India also. And his beautiful two son also are doing the same. Saraja, welcome. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much. It is always uh, so beautiful to hear my introduction from you. <laughs> really, I'm honored. Actually, today I have a journey to Bangalore. Last time also, I was unable to attend due to the journey, but this time I was invited by Nadaji. So I felt it's a privilege to make some time for this meeting. And uh, this topic is my favorite topic, speaking on low poverty. And uh, in the presence of all my dear friends, Ingaji, there are so many of my friends on this forum. Uh, it's a very happy moment uh, to share uh, my views on low poverty. Because uh, this is what uh, making the world, uh, it can break or it can make. So in make in the sense, when we take this extreme poverty in a positive way to curb it. So, if you bring, if you are able to bring the people, those who are under the oppression of this poverty, if you are able to bring them out, certainly it's going to make this world a safer and a beautiful place. Otherwise, if we ignore, if we ignore this problem, because 600 million people, 600 million people around the globe are under extreme poverty. It's not poverty. It's a extreme poverty. So we should not ignore 600 million people. We should be very careful about this thing because in sustainable development goals, it is given a great priority because this is what uh, making or breaking. So focusing on this issue, making nations, ignoring this issue, breaking nations. So it is the right time because we are in 2020. You believe it or not, in 1990, there are nearly 2 billion people. There are nearly 2 billion people under extreme poverty in 1990. So if you see what happened after 30 years or 30 plus years, we reduced this number into nearly 70%. In these 30 years, three decades of time, we reduce this maximum percent, it's nearly 70%. So now we have 600 million people who were under extreme poverty. So if we focus a bit, if we focus, because when it is possible for us to make it, uh, uh, <clears throat> when you are, uh, when you need to uh, make it possible to make it, uh, uh, the number from 2 billion to 600 billion, if we focus on this issue, we can do it. We can make this number to zero. We can reduce this number to zero. But you know, there are always politics. The problem is there are always politics because some people should be, some people should be always under oppression because this is what uh, politicians need because they need some work. They want some work. Because we can see many governments, many governments, they are making millionaires into billionaires. They are making millionaires into billionaires, which means they are supporting the millionaires. Rich are getting richer, poor are getting poorer. So this is what happening after uh, 2000 onwards, 2010, 2020 onwards, this is what happening. Rich are getting richer. 
If you have money, you get more money. If you don't have money, you never get money. So the line is going like that. Rich are getting richer, poor are getting poorer. So, of course, we do not. Uh, we need not blame all the governments. We need not blame all the politicians because whatever they could do, they have done. I always hope this is the responsibility of the global citizens. This is the responsibility of the global citizens. Because nowadays we cannot trust even media channels. You believe it or not, in, especially in India, of course, India can be a number one nation if you put efforts because it has that much scope. In any aspect, India has the full potential to grow like a, a superpower, like a US or like a UK or like a China or like Russia. So it has all the qualities. At one time in the uh, 2000 uh, plus, uh, it is second. Uh, it has reached second place in the world economy. But in the present scenario, it's uh, four or five that uh, that is different. Okay. Anyway, so all nations have scope. Here I'm not only really talking about the India, but all nations globally, all nations have scope to expand their market to expand their economical uh, stature, to expand their growth, they ex to expand their development. But recent uh, changes are happening. The formula is simple. Rich are getting richer, poor are getting poorer. So why should we take initiative? Why should we take initiative? Because Saraja, please unmute yourself. I muted all. Please. Okay. Sorry. sorry. Please, yeah. please be muted, Mrs. Sayada. Please. You can continue. So sorry. Yes. The present scenario is which are getting richer, poor are getting poorer. So it is not the time for the governments or the media outlets to voice it out. First of all, we voice it out. It is the responsibility of every global citizen to take voice, to raise voice on behalf of the 600 million people, those who are under extreme poverty. Because when people raise their voice, then governments consider. Because if you see, especially in India, in Indian context, you know what is happening? If a news gets viral, if a news gets viral and all people respond on social media channels, then governments immediately take action. Of course, not only in India, but everywhere. If people focus on this issue and uh, they keep on raising the voice, you know what happens? Governments comes down, the government come down and uh, they will take action. So here, Media channels have become marketing agencies. If you believe it or not, there are no news channels in the present scenario. There are new, no new channels in the present scenario. If you see in India, uh, one person, he always shouts. We don't know why he shouts. There is a one fellow from one channel, from reputed channel. He's an Indian number one journalist. But it is a shame on uh, journalism because such type of abusive words such type of news on news channels. Really, that's very pathetic to uh, listen, but that is what is happening. All abusing words, all abusing discussions, because there are no new, even nowadays, there are cross-verifying new channels are there, news outlets. There are social media outlets or websites. They are fact-checking. One news is telecast. The information is getting to the minds of 120 uh, Plural of people, then there are some people who fact check and they say this is not right, this is wrong. The facts are these. So even those new channels won't bother about the things. But you know what happening? The propaganda nowadays the media channels have become a propaganda channel. If I say today there are six hundred millions of people are suffering because of this extreme poverty, if I say no, 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 no way. There are no 600 million people. Just uh, it may be 600 or 
200. You know what happens? Every day the discussion, 600 million, 600, 600 million, 600. The experts who ever join this program, they always say that 600, 200, 100. Because see, for example, see our life. Because for example, see our lives. So whoever sitting in the media channel outlets, they won't be the people uh, under the category of extreme poverty because these people won't go and ask. They will ask the people who are millionaires and they say that, they say that they are, there is no poverty. There is no extreme poverty. So we were given a completely a propaganda. The media channels have become a complete propaganda, uh, propaganda uh, marketing agencies. So it is the responsibility of citizens to raise this wise against the 600 million people who are under this extreme uh, poverty. Because I always say that the people have people wise global city as a global citizen, it's our right because we have constitutions. We have constitutions. Our constitutions have given a power to wise it out, a freedom of speech. So we can speak. We can speak and we can raise our concern on these. So my dear friends, please focus on raising your voice because you may be an individual today and I may be an individual today, but when we come onto a platform, really we all together and make a worship. We all together can move mountains. So we should fight against this extreme poverty by taking few measures. The first one, let me say, just I will uh, conclude in this, uh, my remarks just with a few words. First of all, inequality. There are people who were segregated in all, most of all nations. If you say there are no segregations in our nation, you are lying. And the name of caste, and the name of creed, and the name of religion, and the name of race, and the name of region, and the name of place, and the name of your culture, and the name of your tradition, whatever it may be. There is one point that segregates you from your neighbor. It brings inequality, we believe it or not. So, first of all, we have to fight for the equality because here, when we are talking about the rich people, they are born with those privileges. They are born with privilege. They see their caste, they see their religion, they see their background, they see their forefathers, they see their region, they get everything. They see their caste, they get nothing. They see their religion, they don't get anything. So this is what happening because of inequality and because of marginalization. You know, guys, marginalization is very dangerous because when people realize, realize that they are marginalized, you know, what is, uh, who are becoming, you know, what are, who are becoming anti-social elements? When people are marginalized, when people are marginalized and when re they realize the fact that they were being marginalized because of the place they were born, because of the religion they were born, or because of the caste they were born, or because of the race they were born, or because of the ethnicity they were born, if they know that they were marginalized, certainly they become anti-social elements to get their rights. So it should not be encouraged. Marginalization, it should be curved in the bud. Inequality, it should be curved. Then there are so many problems, hunger, malnutrition. If you see our kids, if you see the children, uh, that's a, a very pathetic situation actually. Hunger is a different subject, but uh, it included in the poverty. Because when people are uh, when people are in extreme poverty, you know what happens? The basic problem, the people, those who are in extreme poverty face, the hunger, the mal malnutrition, because they cannot survive. They cannot survive long enough to realize what is their uh, present situation. What is their current situation? How to cope up this situation? because ever since they were kids, they face this problem. Malnutrition makes them weak, weaker and uh, uh, they become patients. So they become ill people. So this is what happens with those people. So it, the hunger should be curbed. The malnutrition should be curbed in the uh, kids. The government should uh, focus, concentrate on these ones. Then we can see a clean water, a sanitation and a hygiene. When people are in extreme poverty, they don't get uh, proper clean water, 
and hydrogenic environment and all these. The governments and uh, uh, NGOs, international NGOs, they should focus on these areas. And uh, we know that climate change is a different aspect, but here it is facing, here it is, uh, uh, it is becoming a root cause to this poverty. Because however the people under this extreme poverty, they can, they can cope up with this situation. But you know what is happening uh, due to extreme poverty? When we don't want rains, the rains come. When we want rains, there won't be any rain. So this is what happening because of this climate change. So this is also directly or indirectly, it is a root cause to poverty. We should fight aggressions because all sustainable development goals, all 17, are, 17 goals are interlinked. So we should focus on other aspects also. But uh, the main, the main role, our responsibility is voicing out the problem. Our responsibility is voicing out the problem. As a global citizen, it is you and me to take part, to raise our voice. This is the first thing. You know, we have to raise our voice till our voice is heard by the governments. Because you and me may help one family or two families for a short period of time, but we cannot do it in a longer run. But it can be done when the things are initiated by governments. So till the governments, till the governments hear our voice, we have to raise our voice. So then it can be article, audible to all regions, all national leaders. Then we can see the dream of when this extreme poverty can be curbed and from the clutches of this extreme poverty, these six million, 600 million people will be brought back to a freedom of life where they can enjoy all amenities. Then it feels like they have been. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. And sorry if I take some extra time, but always I feel very happy whenever uh, you excellencies uh, on this podium. Thank you, excellencies. Thank you for joining to this beautiful program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Raja, thank you for your speech. You are doing that from your heart. We know you are that kind, you are that person for humanitarian, for, as you said, no poverty, zero, no zero hunger. Each day we are monitoring your activities uh, worldwide. You are now in India, then traveling another country and also so many events. Uh, so many activities we see what you do. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us and for being today on the first day, our guest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, now from uh, India, we are moving to the Philippines. We are moving to the Philippines and we have also a great, amazing person who is like Sir Raja working each day on the humanitarian. Dr. Frolian Di Mobo uh, is uh, assistant director, uh, coordinator, professor at the Department of Research Development in the Philippines Mercant Marine Academy. Uh, he has two doctorates and as I said, uh, he is a director for the International Human Rights Movement Philippines under the umbrella of the United Nations. So you see how much work is here uh, under the umbrella of the United uh, Nations. Uh, that is only one part what he is doing. He's a researcher by heart, uh, editor in board, editor in chief, uh, and etc. Uh, Dr. Fralia Moba, welcome. Enlighten uh, us with your speech and presentation today. Good evening, Dr. Nanda and the rest of the uh, friends from the international community. So it's already uh, late here in the Philippines. So uh for this one is uh, of course one of the goals of the international human rights movement uh of course is to help and give support to those who are in need just like what we are doing of course in the pastoral care from time to time for children of course that is uh, located here in at saint anthony's uh Matain, saint anthony of Padua parish so it's in the philippines and other areas which is in sustaining and fighting poverty 
because uh, the majority of the residents, not only in Subic, but also in other parts of the Philippines, were greatly affected by the global pandemic and up to now. As I know, some of them, of course, lost their jobs and others lost their business income. So the project's uh, objective and goal are to support, of course, the uh, United Nations SDG goal number one, which is low poverty. And of course, in order to be able to achieve and defeat poverty, of course, hand in hand, the national government, of course, and the NGO, together with the international human rights movement and other local government officials, must collaborate to work together in achieving and defeating zero hunger. That's why it's very important to achieve that in maintaining the sustainable development and goals. And of course, one way to stop poverty is to have a sustainable livelihood pro, uh, project program for the poor families. So with that, they would be able to attain what we call the sustainable development and goals. And one, uh, one part, one project that the, that the national government, of course, of our country, headed by our dear President uh, Bongbong Marcos, is of course, in legacy of the, of the former President Duterte, is the Ambition 2040, which is aligned, of course, in the sustainable development and goal. That is, of course, to defeat, uh, of course, no poverty. And part of that, uh, that is to sustain. So with that, uh, thank you for inviting me. And good evening and mabuhay from the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Sholyam Oba for your speech. Keep doing uh, great work, uh, not only on this SDG, on all and uh, your humanitarian work. Uh, I think that we will see you also again at the uh, last day. So till then, stay safe, stay health. And let's continue with our next uh, speakers our next speakers will be students again so please my dear students uh, can you open your camera to see you uh, beautiful marta please uh, please uh, unmute yourself hello Hello, Marta and Marco, please, you also unmute yourself Hello. and open your camera. Yes, uh, I could. Okay, okay. So again, two great students, they are coming from Croatia and also they are my students and also I'm very, very proud on them. Each of my, one of my students are amazing. They are doing a great job because you know, uh, they can say alone how much I try and I want from them to do the best and give their best always. So I will, sh uh, I will share your, uh, the presentation. Okay, uh, just a moment. Um, uh, I need some, uh, just a moment. So until then, please uh, introduce yourself, each one of you. Okay, we uh, can. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Marta. Uh, I'm a student in a school called Banja Supjelacic. Uh, I'm 16 years old and uh, this is my colleague Marko and my professor Nada. Wow. <laughs> Marco, please, you. Hello, I'm Marco. I'm a student of third grade in school called by Josip Jalacic, and I have 17 years old. And I think you would uh, enjoy to hear um, my and Marta presentation. I think that we will really enjoy. Yes, let us see. Let us see. Okay. <clears throat> Let us see what you make for us today. Uh, 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 I will share. 
Uh, is it visible? Uh, Marco, no. yeli vidljivo? Not yet. Not yet. We only see, uh, see the Zoom meet. The Zoom meet. How that, how that. Uh, let me, let me try again. Now. No. Okay. Now, what you see, my desktop? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, so let's again, because I'm a host and now I'm sharing, so let's see. Is it now visible? Yes, visible. Okay, and thank you. I still, I still can't see. Who can yes. see? Yes. Yeah. Marta, uh, can you see? Okay. Same for me. Uh, do you see? Sad malo vidim. Did it come? For yes. For me, yes. it's still loading. At you, still loading. Oh. Yes. Oh, it is because the internet today we have a lot of rain. Not good. Uh, not a good time. So maybe a little, little. Uh, connection little uh, slowly so what now did it come uh, yes. i now see the, your desk, desk desktop oh it's now presentation yes okay so uh, let's start let's start with our topic good luck thank you uh, hello everybody today me and my colleague marta are going to present uh, no poverty in our world and creation. What's the, uh, why you stop? Uh, it, uh, the page didn't change. What happened? Uh, the page I uh, seen the the first page mm -hmm. the, the page didn't change to the next one. Um, oh, now it is. Uh, now. Uh, now it's good. Uh, okay. And promoting all the uh, its forms everywhere. Everybody can help uh, to make sure we meet the global. Gl uh, goals. Uh, the most important seven targets are uh, to create action to end poverty on all its forms. Uh, uh, the one first one is eradicate uh, extreme poverty. Uh, second one is reduce po poverty at least 50%. Uh, third one is implant social uh, protection system. The fourth one is the equal rights to ownership, basic service, technology, and economy <coughs> with resources, resources. The fifth one is build resilience to environmental, economic, and social dis distress. And sixth one is to mobilize uh, resources to implement politics to end poverty. Seven one is great to create pro poor uh, and gender sen sensitivity policy uh, framework. So, what is the impact of COVID? Let's see, Marta. It's uh... It's not, you have to turn to the next page. I can't see. Uh, I change it. I change it. Uh, maybe the internet is slower a bit. Do you see now? Not yet. Uh, now I see. Um, so on this page, 
So in this time, uh, we're going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on global extreme poverty. Uh, eradicating poverty is not a task of charity. It's an act of justice and the key to unlocking an enormous human potential. Still, ne nearly half of the world's population lives in poverty and lack of food and clean water, and it's killing thousands every single day of the year. Together, we can feed the hungry, wipe out disease, and give everyone in the world a chance to prosper and live a productive and rich life. Um, here we can see some picture that is animated about uh, poverty and COVID and how COVID impacted on poverty. Uh, on our next page, you can see uh, some of the uh, important like uh, words uh, which are uh, to show in the, what poverty actually means. And then on the next page, you can see the percentage of where the poverty uh, is most uh, in the world. Like we can see in Africa that uh, there is a lot of poverty like in the middle area. Uh, the slides are coming very slowly to you, I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have a little bad connection. Uh, yes. So now... Yeah. Uh, do you see, Marta, the map? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, here we can see how the poverty is rated in, two, in 2022. Um, the least, uh, the lowest rated is 10% uh, and it's mostly in uh, Asia, um, South, uh, North America, Australia, and some bits in uh, Europe. And the most... Uh, rated is in Africa and some are in um, South uh, America. Okay. Did it come? Uh, a, lo a lot of people in Croatia uh, live on the uh, brink of property more than uh, uh, Seven thousand people. Seven to thousand people live uh, on the edge of existence. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the risk of poverty rate for the last year was uh, eighteen point three percent. Is the International Day of the Eradication of Poverty? This is a problem at global level that uh, Croatia is also facing and is also no expectation in black uh, statistic. So what our statistics show, Marta? Um, I can't see the slide. It, I change it now. Uh, not yet. Hmm. Okay, according to the... Uh, do you see now? Uh, now, I, now I see. Yeah, okay. According to the latest uh, data from the Central uh, Bureau of Stat Statistics, the at-risk of poverty rate uh, for last year was 18.3%, uh, which is slightly more than uh, 700,000 inhabitants in Croatia. Uh, the indicator for people at risk of poverty or social ex exclusion is even higher and amounts to 23 whole 2%. Uh, almost a quarter of the population of Croatia lives on the edge of poverty uh, without the possible to pay rent, utilize food, medicine, basic ne uh, necessary or uh, necessities of a life and without fear they look forward uh, to next month uh, 2019 uh, 
2,927 per month. Uh, this is current poverty line, and many do not have it, not even that much. Uh, full price uh, pandemic, uh, the announcement of inflation, all, all these are the reason why many can barely make ends meet and meat uh, uh, and the biggest blow is the, is uh, the rise in food price so many choose ch uh, cheaper more modest men menus so we see that also a situation in our country is not uh, so good okay like other things Um, the unemployed uh, people with disabilities and retirees uh, are the most vulnerable groups of citizens. Uh, for the later, there is a solution, the adjustment of pen pensions, which by law takes place twice a year. However, it brings an average of 68 kuna pension. But there are those who are privileged. Yes. There are those who are privileged and always they are privileged. So what is our aim to stop? And that privileged people need today be not privileged people. We need equality on this world. <coughs> Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what is about uh, our statistics, <clears throat> our surveys, what we do in Croatia, what is our central bureau statistic doing and what kind of calculation we have about according to our methodology. We have two methodology. So let's see the two methodology and here is the map. So please continue. Uh, every year, the Central Bureau of Statistics of Croatia conducts the population income survival in the survival base of the calculation of the poverty and social exclusive indication for Croatia. The survival is uh, in line of uh, EU regulation and the Eurosum methodology. Uh, prescribed uh, for EU uh, sales statistical income and level, uh, living condition. The statistical uh, income and living condition so why at the uh, EU level in a mandatory uh, mandatory survey so, so and uh, reference data source for monitoring common broad and social inclusive statistics. The yes, Marco, please, uh, can I uh, interrupt you a little? So here, no problem. map, uh, we see Croatia, and we see how many counties Croatia have. So how many counties Croatia have, Marta? Um, I, just a second, it's still loading. Oh. Okay, okay. Uh, here is another. So I want to say that we have uh, 21 uh, counties. So uh, mm -hmm. it's not the same in each one county as our statistics are showing. Okay. So Marco, you said how many, uh, how many is the consumption? How many less we have kunas? So in Croatia is a uh, Hrvatska kuna and uh, it is not good situation. So let's go see what happened, Marta, from 2015 to 2020. What was happening? Um, according to the spending method, the estimated at risk of poverty rate in Croatia in, in 2021 was um, a oh, wait. Um, the slide was slowly moving slowly, so it's just now came. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, the basic indicate the basic indicator is uh, the at risk of poverty rate. This is the percentage of people who have an, an equivalent uh, 
income below the at risk of poverty threshold. The at risk of poverty rate does not show how poor a person really is, but how many have an income below the at risk of poverty threshold. Uh, the at risk of poverty threshold is set at 60% of uh, the uh, main equivalent disposable income of all persons. From 2015 to 2020, the average disposable income per household increased by 35% uh, and the average equivalent disposable income by 43.3% and, and the at risk of poverty rate decreased by 1.6% 1, 1. to 18.3%. And in 2015, it was 19.9%. Um, the concept of relative poverty takes into account the disposable income of the household, uh, the number of members in the household, and the dis distribution of income within the population. Yes, so these changes of the poverty during the, during the pandemic, COVID-19, and the policy, what the policy showed, the situation, what was in our country before the COVID, pre-COVID time. And this was from the statistics. We know always that the data are the big problem. And during the research, we have a lot of problems. So uh, the numbers, uh, the numbers show uh, what was the absolute numbers and percentage of the world population. And this figures, and this is analysis from 183 countries. So this was really interesting when they, when Marco and Marta were doing this presentation, uh, these numbers were really very, very uh, important for them because we know there is still then above 20%. So Marco, please tell us more about this above 20%. It's still too many, it's above 20%. I think that is a regulate member of you, we must reduce it and we are reducing it uh, so that not only through social policy, but through a policy that, that allows the grow of wages, average made, average media wage journal and um, atmosphere in a society where people have equal ch uh, chances. So the progress in the five years of ours is very visible to me. They are always, they may not be as much as we would like, not as citizens would expect, but in, in any case, everything we do, we are working to make life better in Croatia. Yes, we, <clears throat> we are working on that. Risk of child poverty in Croatia. Uh, according to the latest uh, Eurostat data, more than 120,000 girls and boys in Croatia, or 70.1%, are growing up at risk of poverty. As a society, we can work pri primarily on equalizing the starting position in life for all ch children by implementing existing policies and measures. Uh, ensuring equal opportunities for optimal growth and development for children growing up in poverty. Each of us can help by paying attention to those who have less in our environment with respect and dignity and helping them not only materially, but also through inclusion in our lives. For example, it can help them learn, uh, invite a child to a game or birthday or talk to their parents. Yes. Uh, in Croatia, as many as uh, 120,000 children uh, live at risk uh, of poverty. Please ignore them. Uh, do not have the condition for online learning and often due to poverty have uh, con cognitive and emotional consequences. 
So what is the situation in Croatia according to the uh, to the other countries in Europe? We have a situation that each five children in Europe lived at risk and the poverty of the social inclusion and many, many vulnerable children, many special children. We have a lot of children with special needs and disabilities. And Marta, please say what we are doing in our school too. What we are doing, Other, who are we helping? Other countries in Europe also face uh, the problem of a child poverty. Uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, more than one in five children in Europe lived at risk of poverty and social exclusion. This serious problem is currently further exacerbated by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. European countries are working uh, to respond to the uh, needs of the most vulnerable children, especially children with disabilities, um, children living in vulnerable family situations, children in institu institutional care, uh, children belonging to the racial or national uh, minorities, especially Roma, and children of migrants and uh, refugees. Yes. So here we again have the statistics. What about the world, the national poverty, the percentage of the population? And what is the initiative of European Commission? Europe uh, guarantee for each one child. So Marco, what is what what is Croatia? Uh, the UAE guarantee for every child was launched with the aim of uh, giving the most vulnerable children in Europe only mm -hmm. access to healthcare, education, children, children uh, care service, adequate housing and uh, quality nutrition. Croatia is one of seven countries in which UNICEF in, in partnership with European Commission has decided to a pilot program to model the feasibility for uh, guarantees uh, for every children which will contribute contribute uh, to shaping the framework of the of the guaranteed for every children program at at UA level children poverty and social exclu exclusion. Yes. So for example we are talking a lot let's go a little faster through this so what we are doing what are our actions what we do for our children who are living in poverty Marta um, it's still loading okay so we are wearing all their parents we are involving them in the sports activities we are going to the school trips we are saving money for the school lunch we are organizing birthday parties. We are going to the ice cream with the peers. We are doing many things. We are growing with them. We are living with them. And there are many, many consequences of the poverty. So for us, the growth of the children in poverty is what? What is for us their life? What is for us the poverty and social exclusion? Um, children uh, living in poverty are aware that their parents cannot. Oh, uh, some trend. Um, most common consequences of poverty. Uh, the growth of children in poverty is also reflected in their later lives. Poverty and social exclusion significantly aff affect children's upbringing, uh, life, and especially in early childhood making it difficult or impossible for them to access basic services such as healthcare, education, quality nutrition, adequate housing and childcare services. Growing up in a poverty limits the possibilities for the optimal growth and development of the child and prevents the development of some abilities that are important for the future of the child. Yes, great. Uh, most common uh, consequences of poverty. Also, living in some uh, condition is uh, associated uh, with the danger of is isolating ch uh, children from the peace 
uh, in inability to pay for school trips, non uh, participation in uh, socializing with peers as well as a uh, lower grades in school due to lack of computers or old and not enough good computers, Lef uh, lack of good uh, enough internet connection, relevant books uh, or, or adults kept in masonry school ma ma materials. During the pandemic, these differ among children because even more, even more uh, pronounced. Yes. Yes, so let's see. We like uh, economics are doing a SWOT analysis and we have a plan. We have a national plan in Croatia. We have a policy. We have a combating poverty for the social inclusion from 2021 to 2027. And as we know, like economics, we need to have a SWOT analysis. So what are our forces, Marta? Marta, do you hear me? Marta, I think uh, today, I, as I said, we have a bad, bad connection. Uh, yes, yes uh, we have the forces, we have the strength, we have the treats. So how, in what is the policy in Croatia? We have a regulation, legislation of the stakeholders. So what we need to do, we need to have a availability of the old monitoring data. And what is the weaknesses? We have a lot of lacks of appropriations of the tools, tools for the systematic evaluation, for the synergy, the lack of the implementation of the measures. And we have a significant local regional differences in the poverty. That are our weaknesses. We need to try to solve this big weaknesses and we have the occasions what is the occasions we have the occasions and it is a big strategic planning of the management and systemic act and national development strategy croatia 2030 is one of the highest policy for this and we have european funds but the treat we need, we, we need to solve this treat, unregulated processes, the social exclusion against poverty, neglect of many problems to the stakeholders, and we have the strategic documents. So, Marco, what education can transform? Uh, education trend, uh, can transform the lives of people, but also of entire commun uh, communities uh, have Post, uh, post a poverty risk, they're uh, sure for one member household. And are we working on that? What we are doing in our classroom, <laughs> what we do each one year, each one classroom has, uh, we choose, we choose students from Africa, we choose students from Asia, we choose students from the poverty <laughs> Uh, poverty places and you see here we are helping them we are helping them we are paying their scholarship each one classroom has one child for which we are paying the whole scholarship so i am really i will i will repeat again i am really proud of all of my students you see here, now we will not play this video. We can put it in the chat so everyone can watch it. And when you see this child on this picture, we have a Saint Holy of Mary. She is protecting our people, our people, our nation in our country. And when you see this, uh, this child holding this, uh, this fame picture of our Holy, because we send them Food. We send them clothes. We send them money for the scholarship. And this photo, this photo, when they say thank you on Croatia, hvala, and you need to be then proud. And then your heart is full of love and energy. That is giving energy for me and for my students. They are working on the same way as I am doing. Marta, did you come back, please?
Yes, the internet okay, disconnected. Please. Okay, I, I think that, Marta, mm -hmm. so you can describe what we are doing, what this photo means for us. And this topic, no poverty. We are doing that every day. Um, it uh, didn't load, didn't change. You didn't see that. I the pictures of the children, yes. You see the children which they are holding, Hvala. Yes, yes. So please describe it. What we do with this? Why they are saying to us, thank you and hvala? Uh, our country sends them uh, money for scholarship. They get a lot of clothes and they are thanking us uh, in our own language. And uh, they are really happy and, well, yes, they learn a lot and... Um, and yeah. they they learn our language they are learning also our language because we have yes. priests in the country so see do you see this slide thank you for the sweeties thank you for the sweeties here around yes. me i have a net i have my niece my niece has a sweeties in each one second is it is it a equality? Is it equality that these uh, children don't have sweeties in each one moment? What to say on this? So if we don't act, how can we talk about this here, Marta? What we see here? Um, uh, the picture of thank you for the sweeties. Uh, I changed the slide. Uh, it's still loading. Wait. Okay, it is still loading. So now you will see uh, other students here uh, in our high school, what they are doing. Marta, do we see? Oh, uh, these are some of our colleagues from school. Uh, they are, they uh, are planning to be cooks and every year they cook for children that uh, are affected by poverty. They make them cakes. Um, they prepare some uh, things that are necessary to have in the house or anywhere. And um, yes, and every we year they make send it. them. We send them this for the holidays. Uh, yeah, not only for the yeah. holidays. We send that. We can say per month in our country and worldwide. Uh, did we change the slide? Um. So we take care about young, uh, for us, the age is not important. No age, no borders, no limits. So young and old, <clears throat> old people also need to have a lot of love, especially if they are alone. You see here, what we see on this photo, We see, it is still the picture of people eating. Okay. Um, yes. yes. There are there are older people who are maybe more, who maybe have disabilities or who don't have a home or they who live alone. They don't have a home. They don't mm -hmm. have a home. That is that. They don't have a home. And these old people who are ill and also alone and don't have nobody in the life. And it may be, maybe they have a, maybe they have a family, but the family don't take care about them. Am I right? Yes. yes. Here we uh, we talk about this. We uh, we have friends. Our friends are this children, this youth, these students with disabilities, and you see how they are happy because. We are making workshops with them. And not only once, we are doing that every month. Our students and me are going to do the workshops. We are volunteering always. We are doing this because we love them. Here again, uh, I see that internet is bad at my students. 
uh, this is the cookies the cookies also for the people who uh, who is living in the poverty you know he, uh, everyone cannot buy this you see in africa and not only in africa because we have that in our neighborhood we have that in our neighborhood so we are helping our neighborhood the people in our country in the rural parts and worldwide so these are the learning outcomes each one action need to have what a conclusion what we are doing what we recognize what we want to explain what are the needs we need we first need to and that is why i said you need to be a good researcher how to help someone how to know where will the help go is that really a truly is it very important for that person so uh, each one uh, of them are doing always the research so please uh, finish the presentation with the conclusion, my dear students. Um, learning outcome. Um, recognize the potential and importance of educational process in volunteering. Explain the role of motivation and volunteering in the involuntary. Uh, describe the steps of project planning, short term actions and oh great and what we always uh, say on ourselves we can do a little but together we can achieve everything marco please repeat also this on our uh, on ourselves we can do a little but together we can achieve everything yes and we are doing that and we are trying to achieve that always thank you thank you thank you very much please open your camera because i want to see you i didn't see no one because i was sharing uh thank you so i hope that uh this is really what my students are doing and me each day i hope that so many people will be inspired and motivated and if some people do only one part of this our world will be without poverty so a big clap to my students thank you <clears throat> now after croatia we are going to tanzania that is a country where we're always dreaming to go and we have a great personality we have a great uh, uh, who is taking a care about all the sdgs today he's here presenting the topic no poverty welcome dr kimaro the iiu stage is your home and iiu stage always like to hear you because you know each of us we are always monitoring what our great dr kimaro is doing so welcome thank you my name is dr Elbert kimaro from tanzania tanzania is in among east africa country in africa thank you nada for this session. Thank you also for the students according education about the poor but Also, I say thank you for IAU. Yeah, IAU is part of my family. I do many things and everything I, I do, sometime I share in the groups of IAU. Yes, yes, we are watching. We know all what you are doing. And yes, we will come to the Kilimanjaro as well as soon we can. Thank you very much. Today is the first is the second international meeting of sustainable development. And it is another chance to me in this second session 
also also in the first sustainable development so we have uh, many things to discuss about the covert and improved and this individual community and the government together where when we share the ideas we can save and protect the people living in the hard time in the group known as a poverty so i would like to share my experience how can make to end the poverty <clears throat> i would like you to share my screen yes you can you have a permission great oh what a beautiful photo thank you uh professor can you please uh, if you uh great great thank you. sustainable development goal number one some people say no covert, but some people say any covert everywhere. My side, I select ending covert all in all its forms everywhere. There are many definitions about covert, so I select the amount of them. Covert is about not have enough money to meet the basic need include food, clothing, and shelter. Others say, however, poverty is more, much more than just not have enough money. Others say, poverty is a lack of shelter. When you go for economic definition, says poverty is encompasses of standard of living filled with this privation, malnutrition, poor nation, lack of access of, to safe water, drinking water, education, healthcare, and other social services. And you know, safe to survive. Type of poverty. There are situation poverty, general poverty, absolute poverty, relative poverty, urban poverty, and rural. But all this is in two groups. This group is urban poverty and rural poverty. I can I can def define well about the urban poverty and the rural poverty. Before I go there, I want to know causes of poverty. Inequalities in income distribution and the access of pro productivity resources, basic social service op opportunities and more as a cause of a causes by for poverty. Group like a woman, religions, a minor ter minor theories are the most vulnerable. Effective solution to poverty. First of all, educating children. As you can see, the, the picture there in the student from Croatia, you can see education for students, small children. Providing clean water, 
issue of basic health care, empowering girls or women, improve childhood nutrition, support the environmental program. There are many programs dealing with the environment, including my program, Kilimanjaro Field and Class of Environmental Protection. Helping children in their problems, preventing child marriage. How can we end the poverty? Eliminating poverty through equity, reducing poverty with reliance, commit to climate change solution and climate justice, Correcting poverty through education, acting poverty by ending hunger and death, poverty alleviation through peace, after educating them, give the chance to own an asset or property. Let's go to the group of poverty, urban poverty. Uh, as you can say, what, what activity, if you want to, to save or to end poverty at the urban, what can you do in your area, in your country, to ensure you, you like you, you, you was end the poverty? There are many activities around your site. Example, there are many workshops. Before to go to the workshops or to do anything, you can select, you can collect all poverty around your site and ask which or which, which activity is desire or her desire to do it, amount of your activity schedule you have. Some Men, they can say, I would like to go workshop for wedding. Others say plumbing, other furniture, motorcycle, driving. So you can select, you can make your selection and you go to them and ask a question. So the people that who like to be in the wedding, you can select how much and you go to the wedding site or plumbing site, or furniture site, or motor site. So after that, you can go to the class with them and training, induction course about what they, they'll be to do in the workshops. In the workshop, they can get the ideas and knowledge of that, that field. This is for men, adult, is not for young people. This is for adult. So for this idea, you can reduce poverty at its many area around the world. There are some like a phone accessories, as accessories. There are some needy transportation such as motorcycle, bajaj, because is a general transport around the world. There are many activities such as car wash in, is a good business because is a few, a lot of, is a, have a few money to, to start this business. So by using for, for this four item, you can, make your idea, and for this four, you can reduce or ending poverty around your site. For women, for women, they can do cosmetics, skin care, and hair salon after induction course. Soap making, labor in their daycare centers, Cake in the cupcake bakery, juice in the fruits. All this business need a small capital. 
or and this is for adults. Some example of activity for men. You can see here, this is car wash. This is a workshop of motorcycle. This is the phone accessories. Maybe the phone is broken, needed to repair, whatever. The men can do it. Driving for motorcycle, bajaj. This is activity for men. Activities for women in urban. Can see cosmetics, soap making, they can do it. Cake and the juice. Many people around the urban need the juice, need cake, need to be in good skin care. So by using this idea, you can reduce poverty around your site. Example assets can give them in rural area. As you can see, is me. You can use the rural area for beekeeping and the advantage you can get the natural honey. And the, your cost is only to make this bee box. And the harvest is not a, a good a, a hard, hard way. Just a box and you put in the tree and the harvest. Honey, it will give you money. They are bee wax, they are pollen, there are many things in bee you can get. It. As you can see, I'm an ambassador of bee protector. So I would like to say. He is my friend. Also, in the rural area, people they can make natural chicken that can give you natural egg and meat. This is the natural and chickens. And the, the salt waste in these chickens, we can use it in the um, vegetable, fruits, garden, whatever, as a soil fertilizer. And you can see product of this chicken is egg. I will say the salt waste from chicken, you can put in here. You can get a good vegetable, don't have an industrial fertilizer, and you can get a good health. This is the garden, my home. So I use the organic fruits and the uh, vegetable. Also, we can give the poverty asset. This asset can help you to get a milk and the meat and also the salt waste from goats. They can use it to the farm, vegetable, fruits, and the, for purpose of soil fertilizer. So they can't go to the shop to buy a fertilizer because already have at their side. And because it's rural, feeding of animals such as goats and the Chicken is simple. This is my WhatsApp number. And this is the, my initiative. And this is my idea how can we end in a poverty. Thank you, IAU. Thank you for this session. Thank you for listening. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you, there, Dr. Kamara. Uh, it was really amazing uh, what you show us, what you are doing. Uh, we are really proud of you. Uh, keep doing this great work because uh, we are happy <clears throat> that in Tanzania, in your country, that is a person like you who is doing the best in all SDGs we can say. Thank you. 
Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks. Now, after Tanzania, we are going to Georgia. We are going to Georgia. We are going now. We will have a beautiful lady, uh, a beautiful friend. Uh, she is uh, IAU, head of Europe. Uh, uh, let's see what uh, our great uh, Dr. Inga Karchilava is doing on this topic. No poverty. Welcome. Uh, welcome. How are you all? Congratulations, really, really, really wonderful day today. Hello, thank you very much for this invitation, me. I am very happy to be with you today and to be a part of a particularly important conference, really. Thank you very much, dear Nada, my dear sister, for this work. You really doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much. My respect Thank to you. <laughs> wow, really you. great job. And congratulations, all your students. Really amazing job. Thank you. And of uh, course, you will, you will see more than there will be a lot of students. Yes, I am writing. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going. Uh, one minute. My presentation. Okay, poverty occupies one of the most important places in the country's uh, economy. That's why I think it is a very relevant topic to discuss. Poverty is not only a country problem, but a global problem also, the scale of which is uh, constantly increasing. Today, this problem affects millions of people. Poverty and economic inequality remain one of the main problems of the modern world. Despite the high price of world globalization, regions of the world differ significantly from each other in terms of the standard of living. In the percentage terms, the highest level of poverty are found in countries south of the Sahara and in Southern Asia. High levels of poverty are also found in East Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean. Eastern and Southern Europe countries have a relative high level of poverty on the poor uh, continents. The countries of Europe, namely Northern and uh, Western Europe, Central Asia, and North America are characterized by relatively low rates of poverty. As for the distribution of the continents according to the level of poverty, the highest level of poverty is in Africa and all the lowest levels are in Europe. At the same time, the largest part of the poor population lives in developing countries. The standard of living of the population is different both between countries and within individual countries. Sciences, right of society differ significantly from each other in terms of income and other indicators of the standards of living. High levels of the Gini coefficients exist mainly in underdeveloped countries. As you know, poverty is uh, the inability to participate in normal public life. Science to participate in such life. One must first have financial resources. And the poor, unfortunately, do not have these uh, resources. Poverty in Georgia, my dear friends, is uh, determined by several indicators. These are indicators of registered poverty and relative poverty. 
It can be said that the most accurate picture is uh, generated by the so-called uh, registered poverty index, which includes the population receiving the state subsistence allowances. In recent years, an impressive reduction in poverty has been observed in Georgia, and the inequality has decreased slightly. But despite this, the poverty rate is still quite high. Poverty and an early age can cause several mental and physical disorders. Studies have shown that the extreme poverty rate in the general population and among children is four and six percent. We all agree that poverty is the number one problem that requires a lot of offers and the right strategies to eradicate it. It is interesting. What Georgia has done to eliminate the problem, the government approached the United Georgia Without Poverty Program. The project aimed to create employment opportunities based on effective labor legislation. Targeted social, social association was introduced in 2006 the goal of which was to provide financial assistance to the poorest 10% of the population. A medical insurance program was also created for families living below the poverty line. I think it is necessary to use all resources take into account the experience of other countries and overcome the extreme poverty that is present in Georgia today. In many developing and less developing countries, a major part of the income comes from tourism. Georgia is a country was region, region or religious have a unique culture, nature, and uniqueness, which has the ability to become a successful tourism product. It is necessary to use the mentioned mechanism in our countries. It is the duty of each of us to create a future. We are poor children are hungry. We are poor people are suffering from poverty. Let's create a country that will have a strong village and educated population and happy future. Also, I teachers, we should make a small contribution to the elimination of the problem. For example, together with my students, we sell handcrafts that we produce as part of mini companies. We organize an exhibition and with the money from the sold items, we help the poorest family in our village. I think that this will help students develop respect, empathy, and competition. Yes, yes. Yes, I think we should also try to solve the problem from a local point of view and to try to reach the global one. I believe that we together we will be many, many good things. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one minute, one minute. This is uh, uh, this. Uh, Poor family. This is the uh, happy Marianne. And uh, okay, this is my topic. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, please, Thank please, you, please, my please. dear sister, Dr. Inga. Great work. Great job with your students. Thank you. So really much. proud this, of you. This topic really very, very important for us because I always try and I, my students, help for family in uh, your village first time. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. Thank you all. Yes, yes, we know, we see, we know what you do. Uh, thank you. Uh, really, really keep doing a great job. And uh, we will also in these days have an amazing girl, an amazing student, a daughter of our great Dr. Inga. So we will see uh, also what uh, her, her child is doing for the better of this world thank yes. you so welcome thank you all thank you there uh, now from georgia we are going to nigeria we have a great personality we have an amazing person who is doing also a great work uh, not only for the sdg one for all the sdgs also he is cardinal King, Ambassador, Professor, Doctor Michael Oje Dembe. Welcome, welcome, Professor Cardinal. And listen, when I read one name, I I I already forget another so long name. Welcome. <laughs> Thank Who you very much. Your name? No one. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, Professor Rada. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. I hope you can hear me very, very well and loud and clear. Hello? Professor Rada, yes. can you hear me? OK. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellencies. And it's nice to be on this platform again. And to know that the issue of low poverty, SDG goal number one, it is a topic and it's, uh, it's a point that we need to emphasize. Hey, Cardinal very well. King, please. Cardinal uh, King. Uh, can you can you little yes, that, uh, Mike uh, uh, try again? Please try to talk now. Okay, can you hear me very well now? Yes. Is, yes. It, is it louder now? Can you hear? Me? Yes, yes. Because okay. when you are moving so, with your hand, no we hear noises. <laughs> Don't move your head. Okay, okay, okay. Be okay. I'll not move my head. I'll make sure my head. Okay. I'll make sure my head is static. <laughs> Let me try. So the issue of no poverty is very, very important and paramount to the SDG goals. Because when we are talking about uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, why they put it at number one, I understand because no poverty is very, very uh, strategic and very, very technical that it needs to be addressed properly. For example, when we talk about Poverty, I define poverty by my definition as the excessive hurt of resources by the few who take back what they give to the society. I define poverty as the excessive hurt of resources by the few who take back what they give to the society. That's how I define poverty. So when I talk about no poverty, I look at it from this particular point of view. And then we'll know that. According to the World Bank, the countries with the highest poverty rate in the world is predominantly Africans. The countries with the predominantly highest rate of poverty in the world is predominantly Africans, which will have countries like South Sudan with 82.30%, Equatorial Guinea with 76.80%, and Madagascar. I'm just trying to make this reference for you to understand when I'm talking from my perspective. I'm from Nigeria here, and we know that poverty is one of I think uh, I think we lost our cardinal uh, bad network. Cardinal King, Cardinal King. Cardinal King, we lost him. We lost him. Let's let's take a second to see will he come back. So in the meantime, uh, uh, I will talk a little 
Uh, I can say that, uh, okay, is he back? Uh, please unmute yourself, please. Please, please. So I will talk a little for me today, uh, the first day, great day, uh, really great start, uh, amazing students, amazing eminent speakers. Uh, we hear a lot because today on the stage, we have people who are really doing people who are acting, not only talking. You know, we recognize people who only talks. They don't have actions. They, they have the words, what they repeat, but they don't do nothing for, for the people, for the poor people, for the hungry people, for the climate, for the decent grow, for the peace, for the health, for anything, they're only talking. So today on this stage and at IAU, we have always experts. We have always great persons who are doing. Uh, uh, our great Caroline didn't come back. So we will give him an opportunity tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, maybe uh, he can again join because we really want to hear, really want to hear what he is doing in Nigeria because IAU has a great, uh, a great IAU Africa team with our Sir Charles, Professor Charles on the head and all of these people are doing amazing for education in Africa for for no poverty for no any of this SDGs. So I'm really happy uh, today on this first day. I'm looking forward for tomorrow because tomorrow we also have a great person. We also have again students who will share their experience, their work, their knowledge. Uh, our great uh, Dr. Kimaro, our great uh, Dr. Raja, our great Dr. Frolian, our great Dr. Inga, our great students, Petar, Marco, e, and Marta, you were all amazing today. We are really proud on you all. Uh, we want to uh, thanks to each one of you for your great uh, speech, for your great presentation and for your work and for enlightening us with, uh, with the things that are really important for us. Uh, no words to express my gratitude to all of you. You were all amazing. Uh, the person behind the success of today's event who is continuously guiding us motivating us to put in our best, yes, our dear founder, uh, Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir. Uh, words are not sufficient to express our heartfelt gratitude. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all watchers on the Facebook for being a part of this conference today. It is a really honor. Uh, so uh, we are calling you for tomorrow. Please join us tomorrow on the day two on the topic zero hunger and be with IIU because IIU is the change, IIU brings the change, IIU is the revolution and IIU is doing all in this field. Uh, I said all, but our great uh, doctor come back. Let's see what he will say. Let's, let's, let's wait him. Again, let him try because he has a bad network. Uh, Cardinal King, uh, do you hear us? Okay, can you continue, please? Please don't put that headphones, try to speak without headphones. Oh, hello, Professor Rada. Yes. Yes, I'm back, sorry. Welcome, welcome back. 
Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. So, can I still continue, please? Okay, yes, you can continue. Okay, we have a lot of human resources and capital resources and natural resources. So the world has no need to have this level or high rate of poverty. Especially, like I said, I'm from Nigeria. The level of poverty is so high. But with all the natural resources, we're not supposed to be poor. We are major exporters of oil, like in Nigeria. We are major exporters of uh, 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 aluminium, like the one we have in, uh, in Central Democratic Republic of Congo, leg. But yet, the poverty rate is so high. Why? Because if there is corruption in place, if there are still people who are still adding, taking off, holding resources, fighting the progress and prosperity of a particular nation, or becoming selfish at a level, definitely poverty is still inevitable. So we must come to a point whereby we have to give up selfishness, whereby we have to see ourselves as one, whereby we start taking uh, personal responsibility as looking at ourselves as global, as humanity in general as one. Because as it is right now, there are countries with a lot of human resources. If we can bring them up together, we'll see that we'll work together. And a lot of developmental plan will go on. Now, with the poverty rate that is going on, look at the rate of killing. Poverty has led to a lot of killing. Poverty has led to a lot of uh, uh, suicidal thoughts. In fact, in my country, the level of people who have committed suicide as a result of poverty is so, is so heartbroken. Like when I just told somebody who is like a natural or so, all because of poverty, you couldn't afford to pay school fees or meet up with your family needs, committed suicide. Why? Because of poverty. And I want you to know that due to selfishness and selfish reason going on at the background, a lot of people don't see anything wrong with it. They see it as something they take advantage of. So the question we see, we all know about the problem. How do we come out of poverty? It still means we have to deal with the issue of corruption. We have to deal with the issue of corruption. Let's look at it critically. Corruption must be out of place. And then we have to deal with the issue of tribalism. If we say no poverty, when we are still tribalistic, poverty is still inevitable. We have to deal with the issue of tribalism. We have to deal with the issue of ethnicity. Of course, we have a lot of businesses. OK, like I saw one of, the, one of my speakers who presented something great. He showed how some people have crops, they have food stores, they are selling. They are good. But if there's tribalism, ethnicity like we have here, whereby somebody says, oh, this person is not from my clan, or it's not from my particular uh, religion, or it's not from my particular belief, I will not patronize them. I will not buy from them. First, hunger will increase. And then at the end of the day, what do you have? You still have a situation whereby the person who brings the goods to the market, the wares to the market, like people who are selling perishable goods, at the end of the day, when they bring them to the market, because of no patronage, as a result of tribalism, or religious or ethnicity differences, bias that people are having, they will not patronize them. Those goods will be waste. And then poverty will increase for that person. Who knows if the person went and borrowed money? Some of them, like in my country, a lot of people collect loans. If you Google it online, you see there are so many farmers' loans out there that they give to people so that they can do some farming. So if they go into that and go and borrow loan to even do some of those businesses and they are not being patronized, poverty will still increase. And then we also have to look at the issue of uh, uh, dignity of labor. Dignity of labor. How do I mean? When we are talking about there should be no be poverty. If somebody else go out there, labor, gather, food stores and everything, and somebody else from nowhere come and steal them. Come and steal them. After the person have toiled day in, day out to gather all these things, definitely the person whose goods have been stolen will remain in a perpetual state of poverty. How would that person go back to go and engage this? So even if he tries it again, they still loot it. Like it's happening in my country. A lot of farmers' goods are being taken by force. They have been taken by force. In fact, dignity of labor has reduced drastically in my country, whereby farmers can hardly farm. Even when they farm, they can't go to harvest their crops. So many of them now are in abject poverty. So we have, if we're talking about no poverty, a lot of issues come into play so that we, we must know that we must be our brother's keeper. We must respect our uh, societal differences. We must respect our colors. We, have, we must respect our racial differences. We must respect our ethnicity differences. We must be able to see the fact that 
looking at the other person's well-being is my own. That's why I like it when they say, what humanity day? I love it. Whereby you see your neighbor uh, as yourself, love your neighbor as yourself, where you start saying, no, 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 this person doesn't come, or this goose uh, doesn't come from my country, so it's of some standard. Because we're still talking about, what about national issues? Like there are countries where if some certain goods, we're talking about no poverty, please. Uh, we're talking about some countries, if some goods should come from a particular country, and it's not from their own country of like, even if those goods are of standard, for the fact that it's coming from that country, they will not patronize them. So what happened to those such countries? They still live in poverty. Like some of those, like in my country now, they ship gari to so many foreign countries. They ship so many foodstuffs, including rice, to so many countries. Now, if they ship those goods to those countries and those countries don't patronize them, they don't buy them, they don't even use them. The country where those goods are being exported, consider all the export duties and everything, they will still suffer from what? Poverty. So this issue is not just about just having businesses alone. We must come to those that first we need to have a business, but we must look at it from a broader scope to make sure that we become our brother's keeper. Let's love. And let us all have it at the back of our mind that poverty is not what we need. Even though the few are enjoying the dividends of it, but we must know that it's affecting the majority. And if the majority can come together and say we support the United Nations SDG goal number one, that no poverty, I am telling you, we have a better society. And because of poverty, as you know, education is suffering. Where parents cannot send their children to school as a result of poverty, when they don't have money to even send their children to school, how can those children have quality education? When we talk about climate change, poverty, when people, okay, now there are so many countries with recycling uh, uh, factories and industries. A country that is poverty stricken, how do they have a, a, a recycling industry whereby we have li uh, liters of canned water littering around? Can some countries still use lead when we are saying, no, 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 we don't need to use some of those things? They are still using them not because they want to, but because of the level of poverty they can't afford. Thank God for America now, they are driving electric cars. But come to Africa and some countries, they are not driving electric cars, they are still driving. Cars that uses diesel. They see drive cars that uses petroleum. They see, they see drive cars that still pollute the atmosphere, air pollution, not because they, 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 they don't want to drive the electric car, but because of the rate of poverty. So, no to poverty. I stand with the United Nations Sustainable Goal number one that no to poverty. I want to tell you that this goal is achievable if we all work together as one well and continue to support the United Nations. Thank you very much. Professor Radnada and your able excellency. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, great. Thank, thank, you, very thank you very much. Great, uh, great, you. like thank always. You. We are really happy that you <laughs> return back. We wait. Yes, I gave already a vote of thanks, but you come at the end. So really, really honored uh, that you are back. And I will now end the session and i want to say this stop the poverty everywhere this goal one today gave the aim to end poverty and it all the forms everywhere so as a part of the sdg countries it is committed we need to reduce child poverty why child poverty because we know the children are really experiencing poverty differently from the adults how can live like a child and be not live with that poverty the child have the needs the child have a expectations and yes it is very different from an older person you see today in the presentation how our students are helping little child and the old people because the effect is very big and nevertheless child poverty is really different from the adult poverty but we need to take care about each one person no matter how old they are and all the dimensions need to be recognized i will again said i am you is taking care about the old, about the youth, about the students, and about the older. 
And especially because if we talk about the child, I will repeat again, because the poor little child needs to have all today, the right. They, need, they, they don't need to be robbed and they need to use their potential. They need to use their potential. Uh, so many students, children, youth with uh, disabilities, we need to take care about that person. You know, when you have 24 uh, young, uh, young students in the classroom, you know that you will always have students with disabilities. Uh, some students don't see, some students don't talk good. So you, like an educator and we like educators need to take care about each one student and also teach them educate them to do this what we are doing every day so uh, we will not finish with this topic why because each one of the sdgs are correlated because how can talk about no poverty to, to not mention zero hungry or well-being or peace or any any of this SDGs. So uh, I will repeat again, please continue with us uh, tomorrow at the same time. Uh, you will have opportunity again uh, to hear, to listen. Uh, many experts, many students, and many big change makers. And I can say, ISDGC 2022 leaders. A big clap to all who join us and who will be this 12 days with us. Thank you. And see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye to all. Bye.